Supply chain management unit number five. Uh, as you can see in the video, I'm looking more tired and tired. This um, this um, being a YouTuber is not really my cup of tea. But anyways, let's go through unit number five very quickly. So first of all, in this case, we're going to be talking about sourcing for the supplier. How we're going to look for that for that supplier. So let's go through a couple a couple things very quickly today. So first of all, in the sourcing process is where we need to understand what kind of supplies we need, what are the requirements, technical requirements for it, uh, if we can do them on our own or purchase them from someone else, are we going to do them in-house or going to have an outsourcing, we're going to be talking about sourcing later, we're going to identify what kind of purchase, is it going to be like a short term or is it going to be like a longer term, we have to conduct a market analysis, we're going to talk about that later, we're going to identify the possible suppliers because we always identify one key critical suppliers and then we have some other plan B, plan C, plan D in case the main suppliers that we're looking for are not fulfilling with the expectations that we're looking for, right? And then of course goes the process of choosing the supplier. There's many processes that we need to look at and we're going to be talking about that later. And of course comes the delivery of the product and we have to measure also how good that that uh, that process and how smooth it has been whether uh, everything has come according to the norm that we stipulated to the contracts we have according to the timing the pricing etc so we have to always evaluate the suppliers of course when we can evaluate them and we can change them we can do that if they are not performing very well some other cases we have sole suppliers and there's nobody else so regardless that the performance is not optical, 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 optimal, we still have to stick to them, okay? Very good. So, in this case, again, we have to analyze the market conditions. Most important here are the loss of the supply and the demand. We have to understand whether there's a supply for a certain uh, product or so and what kind of agreement are we going to develop with our supplier it can be sometimes just for a project it can be a short term medium term or long term so in this case we have to understand also whether other companies how are other companies purchasing this kind of supplies whether we can purchase them in credit or cash that's very critical because many 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 companies what they do is buy on credit meaning I buy the supplies I manufacture them and once I sell them or at least I have some time to sell them then I can pay you back right so we have to look on that and uh, we have to look in general how the market is behaving so now Now we have the supplier performance, possible factors to evaluate. Here we're going to be looking at, and I think I mentioned that in previous units, we have to think as our supplier, as our partner, right? So we have to think that they are the right fit in terms of quality, delivery, they are, they are supplying on time with the right quality, with the right price. If we have any problems that they are able to respond, that they establish communication effectively with us, that they also adapt to our technical and uh, technological platforms. And of course, like I said, contract based whether they are fulfilling all their responsibilities. So it's, it's like I said, it's a, it's a marriage relationship and sometimes we have to look at every detail to know whether they are fit or not. And also if they are not fit, whether we can change them or not. As I mentioned, sometimes we cannot. Then we have uh, factors apply affecting the supply base. Th th there can be many types of suppliers in some industries. Some industries are very limited. It depends on the range of products that, that, that they are supplying or that we're manufacturing, where there also the supply chains have many risks. Sometimes uh, there's environmental conditions such as weather, like for example, it can be uh, some factories manufacturing uh, fabric and then the cotton sometimes is scars and, and that that influences also there's also some products that are only in certain regions only some world regions produce certain things why because the trees or the raw materials only grow in that specific area so we have to look at that and again that influences also the supply base whether there are more suppliers or less than we expect now we have what are the possibilities? We have the possibilities of producing in-house or 
uh, give it to someone else. So, of course, when we're thinking about doing it ourselves, DIY, DIY, uh, do it at home, that's, of course, more cost-effective, time-effective, and, of course, uh, it, it lets you maneuver in many ways. The problem is whether you have the time and the resources to do it. Uh, it can save us time, but we have to invest a lot of knowledge in developing some certain new materials or certain products, and that 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 can influence a little bit our 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 final outcome. So now we have uh, benefits of outsourcing. So usually, when I decide that okay, it's not a great idea to do it in house, it's a there's a possible problems with that then I rely on outsourcing. Someone else is going to do it for me. Why? Because they already have the expertise. They know how to do the product. They, they have it ready tomorrow. So I can change all my capital that I was supposed to invest in, in myself and doing it myself and just put it aside to them. Uh, I can negotiate also a good, a good agreement and perhaps I could even get it cheaper as if I would if I were to do it by myself. So in this case, we have to financially analyze what is the right idea. They also technically, what is the best best decision? Now, the thing is that when we decide to work with subcontractors or, or we do certain a alliance with any supplier, we have to we have to share. Sharing is caring. We have to share a lot of knowledge, a lot of information, materials. We have to be monitoring them. We have to share our also our manufacturing processes with them. And that is very critical. Sometimes we have to have a lot of contracts that specify very quickly what what really is possible to share and what is not and uh, because in the end we have to understand that also suppliers work with other companies so they can use our own information and divulge it to to another company and that 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 can become very troublesome so we have to be very careful with all the information that we're sharing so now we have the pricing agreement so how are we going to be dealing with that so in this case in in the procurement for us as a department, we have to think of the strategy in general. So the strategy in terms of um, what is what are the risk of purchasing that product? What is our strategy in the long term? How many suppliers we have? Whether we can manufacture in, with alternative products? What happens if, uh, if if the products are not delivered? If we have any problems? What are the prices that other competitors are paying paying for that? same supply so we have to analyze again all the market and reach a decision whether this price is adequate or not again we have to look at our in strength, internal strengths and weaknesses we have to look at externally the market and they take a decision whether uh, what whether what is the not whether what is the price, right price to pay for that supply that we that we somehow we cannot manufacture by ourselves So now we have the supplier consideration. The consideration also, that means they also will set their own pricing based on different considerations. They will have to understand what is their position in the market, whether they are a quality supplier, whether they are a poor supplier, whether they have large numbers, small numbers. Sometimes the suppliers also may have very little capacity to produce what they want. Or sometimes they have suppliers that they say, okay, you want it here, now I have it. But the problem is you want it fast, you want it good, you need to pay the premium for that. And we're going to be looking at that in the next slide. But in general, like I said, the supplier has their considerations of what also are their strengths and weaknesses and try to match them those to the company that is, uh, that is uh, acquiring their supplies as well. And based on that, they will set their prices. So let's look a little bit into the certain prices that they have pricing strategies that they that suppliers have let's go through that it's taking some time welcome to my computer it's slow hey <laughs> so we have the suppliers pricing strategy so we have a couple of strategies we have the skimming meaning they will try to reduce as the price as much as possible they are begging you to buy from them why skimming because there's too many suppliers in the market so 
the market is very competitive, you don't have a good price, they will just go next door to the other one. We have a buyer related means we will uh, we will have we will negotiate the price based on the buyer needs and based on what they want. Means the power comes from the buyer. Maybe they are a big buyer, they are the only one, so we have to adapt to whatever they want. We have the penetration which is we set a price as a supplier, uh, we are new to the market or we have a new product and then we have to enter the market, people have to recognize us, who we are, what we, how we can produce it, how efficient we are, so we set up a penetration price just for limited time, just short period of time while we enter the market, while we open the market. Then we have the promotional one which is we offer discounts but based on many factors whether we want a supplier to uh, a buyer to be happy or sometimes we have excess of inventory or there's many reasons why we offer certain promotions right then we have the full cost meaning my, my product is there there's there's very little margin for me to move to a cheaper strategy so I'm just gonna give it the full cost and then we have the prestige or the premium which is products that are priced highly because either I am the only one that has it and I offer it with the best quality when you need it when you want it I have it but you're gonna pay for that as I mentioned earlier before and then we go through the facets of price to be analyzed so in this case we have how do we construct that price so we have to think of what is the construction of the price the construction of the price comes from firstly the material that we're going to be using uh, be, are we going to be using prime materials cheap materials average materials what kind of materials we have where do we need to bring them from how we need to transport them etc etc so there's everything involved to the materials then we have to think about the labor how much it costs in terms of labor whether we need a lot of employees or we have a more automated system and we need to maintain the machines etc etc we're looking at how are we going to be recovering the cost. Overhead costs are those costs that are involved to the production. That meaning electricity, water, uh, taxes, etc. Rental. Some of those are overhead overhead costs. We need to recover them in some way. So perhaps we're going to pass that cost to the buyer. The same thing. Also, we can increase the prices in case of emergencies. That means we are having. A little bit extra just in case something wrong happens we we add a little bit more in case we don't have enough stock or so or sometimes we don't have orders from the buyer then it takes too long for them so I'm gonna price it a little bit higher just in case something wrong happens and then finally what is the level of profit being sucked am I searching for prime pricing or skimming, am I going to be cheap or expensive and that goes together with the kind of company that I want to develop, that's the whole strategy of the company, so we're talking more about the strategic direction of the company and what they want to achieve in the long term. Very good, so that's it for that for, for this week, um, give me one minute. Okay, so for you I say, wait a minute, but my time, we're like five minutes while I try to open this file. So anyways, this is your assignment. In this case, we're going to look at the supplier selection. So I we're going to be looking at how Costco selects their supplier. So I want you to go through this file and I want you to answer the possible questions that we have in here. Everything is mentioned in there. You have to use a little bit of your critical thinking, a little bit of your thoughts. But everything that, that, that we're, I'm asking in there, I'm looking for there, is there. And also, you have to link it together to what I have explained in your unit today. Okay? If you have any questions, please uh, send them to me. Again, you can contact me through Kakao Talk because it's the fastest way that we can do it. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you soon.